Yes, people, what's going on? Welcome back to another club debate. And we are brought to you by Super Six. More about them a little later. Right today, we are joined by, obviously, Rory and Boovy are here with me, but also Spraggy. Hello. Yeah. With a haircut as well. You've had a trim? Can't oh, I think you were down well last time. I, I, I tend not to read too many comments, but everyone's having a go at my hair. So um, I'm here with better opinions and a better haircut, hopefully. And a hat, just and in <laughs> case the hair didn't happen. <laughs> and a Gloucester City hat, uh, cap to hide my shame. Oh, fair and enough, we're, yeah. of course, joined by none other than Villa's finest, Fintan Hand. How the you last doing, time I was on the show, Villa got smashed and it got smashed at the weekend. So I'm a little bit apprehensive. And I was today. gutted about that because it was United that smashed <laughs> oh, yeah, it as well. Idea, I idea. wish I was there. That's when Spraggy was getting ripped about his hair. <laughs> I was there, yeah. Dressed as a bin man, yeah. <laughs> and of course, Spurs is Flav is with Ooh. us. The fighting cock, as they call him. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Is that what they call you? I've no, heard you've been no, called no, a cock no. a lot. That's a collective noun for the people on the podcast. That's not me. I am not the fighting cock. I tell you, every time I use that email address when I go and buy something in a shop, it's a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> the fighting cock is a podcast about I'm Spurs. Right. Is it a collective? <laughs> I thought you were the fighting no, you, cock. Rory, I thought, you, I thought it was you. I thought you, you were the personification <laughs> of a fighting cock. You're acutely cock. aware of what that means, right? So don't, don't give it all that. <laughs> I'd love to know what it means. The I'm fighting I've cock. I've never been told before. I am Flav the fighting cock. I'm not Flav the fighting cock. The fighting <laughs> cock is a podcast of which I'm a part. Let's Less move. about the fighting cup. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about whether the Spurs are in this fight <laughs> with this cup. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we are talking about the title race. It is heating up at the moment. Obviously, we've seen um, yeah, Manchester City, Liverpool, Arsenal all play each other this season already. There's still some big games to come as well. Man City, Arsenal next in the league. It's so, so tight at the top at the moment. Boovy, as our resident Man City fan, how are you feeling? Because last season, you kind of had this expectation that you'd get it. Arsenal would crumble, you'd get it. But now it's a free horse race. Is it feeling different or do you still feel the same cocky? No, no, I think it's over. Um, <laughs> we're, <laughs> yeah, we're sat here, the sun's shining. Well, that's that then, lads. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. <laughs> the, the sun's shining. Everyone's booking their summer plans, their festivals and all that. We're in March. We're a long way into the season now and we're third. We're currently third. That, that's not a joke. Where are we going to get the points from? It's not like we've got any games in hand. We're equal amount of games as everyone else, and we're third behind Liverpool, one of the great Liverpool sides ever, with Jurgen Klopp, great manager. No, but Arsenal, someone has to do something. Someone has to do something about this. No, we are. We just let we're him. Third. Let him, let him let him Morris, how do you win rant. the league in third? How do you win the league? We're third. Well, you let become you become first. You're in, in the you have ten, 10 games to go, thirty points to play for. You win all of them, and you will win the league. Well, we've not beaten anyone in the top six except Man United this season. No, but everybody, beat everybody has at home. Haven't beaten Spurs at home. Haven't beaten Liverpool. Oh, at movie, home. Those, those <laughs> records Master apply Miller. to everyone. Those, those records apply to everyone. Arsenal, for example, they've got some very difficult. Also, Boogie's not up. being serious here. Are, are you Ars being serious? Arsenal beaten Liverpool. Arsenal beaten City this season. So what Huge you're teams. saying, Boogie? Let me get, let me get this right. You're scared of playing Arsenal at home. I'm not scared. I'm not scared. Because it sounds we, like we it. might draw the game and they might still go on it. What I'm seeing from Arsenal is far more momentum, f far more momentum from uh, Liverpool as well. A million percent. I'm, I'm a bit concerned. It's moving round. We look a bit flat. Are you Keegan in it? Do we not look flat against Liverpool? What's happening, everyone? I'm terribly sorry to interrupt this clip, but this is big news. You really do want to hear this. You could win £1 million. Yes, that is correct. £1 million. Have a look at all of that beautiful pie and mash. All you have to do is download the Super 6 app and predict six football scores correctly. It really is as simple as that. It will not cost you a penny. Download the Super 6 app. The link is in the description below. Predict six football scores correctly and you will win £1 million. It really is that simple. Make sure that you sign up. It is a dream amount of money. Enjoy the rest of the clip. You look, we look second not, half. Not the first half. Second half, you did. The first half, you, you know. But, but, what, but we don't we need to judge. Bats. But we don't need to judge Manchester City on one half of football, do we? We can judge them over. We we know what they're about. We know who they are. We know what Guardiola is capable of. I don't understand why we started this video. And we're completely right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a mistake. That's a mistake, Adam. So yeah. why is Booby wrong, Raw? Well, I don't, he's he's not one hundred percent wrong. I just think that he is potentially wrong, but he's not portraying it as as a potential. He's portraying it as a fact. <laughs> The reason why I think that it's it's anybody. So I think we're in a wonderful situation. One of the best title races that that I can remember, really. Because if you think of like, as, as can anyone think of off the top of their head, a genuine three horse race. Like we're what mid March. There's a Rizla paper between three teams. So there's a genuine possibility that three teams can win the league. You've got Manchester City and Arsenal, both capable of winning a European and domestic double. Like those those are legitimate things that could happen this season. Liverpool are on course to potentially win four trophies. This is this is amazing. 
I'm not saying that Man City are definitely going to win the league and Boovy may be right. But he also may be completely wrong and City retain a treble. I also think he's having a little bit of fun with it, isn't he? He's not being well, totally serious, is he? If third, next game, we're third. he's on the wind-up. We're third. But if you win your next game, you're two points clear of the current league leaders. Yeah. Yeah, so but, to, to argue that to argue that yeah, you know it's, it's dead and buried for City. My I, don't, I don't know whether you're trying to paint it as no. an underdog story, but <laughs> to, to me, Man City are not the great underdog as they haven't been for the last what five years at the bare minimum. But um, I, I still think that City personally are, are big favourites to the title. I think yeah, I agree with that. We're, we're all making predictions, they, they've, aren't we? <laughs> they've seen it, they've done it, they've won it. You know, back to back to back, and I think you know Arsenal obviously perennial sort of bottlers and I think they are the team in this three horse race with the most pressure on them as well at the moment they've got a big game away at City coming up and sort of have more of an expectation having not won anything yeah, not won a Premier League title for so long um, if we were third and we beat an Arsenal the on them and they have to go to the Etihad but, and try and get some and I don't think they will I think but, you'll beat them at the Etihad go two points clear of Arsenal yeah but we've then, not seen that this season that's what I'm worried about and, and uh, sometimes football fans can have you know uh, memories where we connect things that happened maybe a year ago or two years ago a year ago we were absolutely exceptional this time last year I would have said we smash Arsenal and guess what we did at the Emirates as well it was an amazing performance this season we're, we're currently in this season we've not beaten Arsenal we've not beaten Liverpool in two games but Could I don't think Spurs, City are worse Chelsea. I just think those teams are better yeah, exactly. So if City fall off by 5%, it's not one side that we have to catch up. It's two. The, the amount of risk that is involved for City not winning the league is now is kind of doubled because there's two I more don't, clubs I don't, Boobie's me. I don't believe what Boobie's saying. <laughs> I don't believe Boobie thinks he, he believes what he's saying. I get there might be a, a, an element of let's sort of damage limitation if it happens. I called it early. Might be a bit of that. But I generally think it's... What about Spurs away? We've never beaten you in the league at your new stadium. You've beaten them there. You've won there this season, Boo. In the FA Cup. Ugly last minute, but in the league... But you've won there this season. The FA Cup's different. We we can't use the FA Cup form to to illustrate Premier League. Have Arsenal beaten you at Etihad? Uh, not, for, not, not for a while. It's, it's not a good I record. Don't, why, why are we trying to I don't convince know. Yeah, Boobie that he's going to win the system? This is a weird angle that this video has gone. <laughs> yeah. Should we... Who, who, I, thought, I thought we were going to start with Boobie going, we're winning the league, and then us going, why Arsenal? Or, I think or that's how this so, video should have gone. Yeah. Maybe. When he said it was over, I genuinely thought he was saying it's over. City had it off. That's what I thought he was trying to say. Of course we're going to win. Can I... Wait, can I just ask that five percent drop off? You talk about your your five percent worse than you were last season. Where do you think that's where do you think that's come from? What what has taken you from last season guaranteed to beat Arsenal at home, guaranteed to win the league, to now you're you're painting yourself as potential third place finisher? I think it's genuinely down to uh, rhythm and momentum. I think if you win three league titles in a row, you win a treble. It's hard to galvanise a side. And I think Guardiola's genius is the fact where it's still in a discussion for a treble. Like Rory said, we're still in a discussion for it. But at Anfield, at the Etihad against Liverpool, there are just signs of a little bit of a, a creep, a little bit of a, a passivity you in the game. You didn't lose that game. Yeah, but we didn't beat them. You've got to beat your rivals. You Arsenal got a, at Anfield. You do in the Premier League title, in yeah, my you've opinion. You've got a horrific record at Anfield. It's your worst game yeah, of the season. Yeah, and you've the, got it out the way. That, that's the anomaly. With a point. But we, <laughs> you've got it out of the way. You've taken two points off Liverpool this season. Crucially, they've got away with one as well. Right, so it's, this is ridiculous. Yeah. Why is it ridiculous? I don't think that City of confidence... You know when Boobie's not being no, arrogant, it still feels arrogant, don't it? Why? Because I think Arsenal... It's almost like, oh, we've wanted too much now. It's too easy that it's become hard again. But we're third. All right. Clive, what are we going to yeah, say? But you're third it? by a point. With with easier fixtures to come, you 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 certainly have the easiest fixtures. Arsenal, you talk about your record. I know that Arsenal still have a lot of these teams to play, but Arsenal's away record against the top teams, I think they've only won at West Ham. Yeah, they've literally great. won it's one. Arsenal have literally won one game. They've got a lot of these fixtures to come, so this is a misleading stat. But of the teams that they've played away from home, they've won one. They've beaten West Ham away. That's it. Mm. They haven't won at Stamford Bridge. They got they got beat. Do you at mean Villa. teams in the top half as a team? Yeah, teams in the top half. They, yeah. they got beat at Villa. They didn't beat Chelsea. They they have only beaten West Ham in the top half. They have a lot of those teams still to play. But so you don't think they can draw at the Etihad and then Liverpool take momentum? It's not. Can. It's not a two-horse race. I also think so that Manchester City, City drop points could, to Arsenal. I also think Manchester Liverpool City take... could win every game between now and the end of the yeah. season and win a treble. Yeah. But if you so like Liverpool, Liverpool, Liverpool let's say done you drew against Arsenal, and Liverpool won. They're only three points ahead of you. Yeah, but Liverpool take advantage. So if if there's any slip and there's there's big games against Spurs, as well as I said earlier, then it's not just one side that can pounce on it. Because if it was just us chasing Arsenal, I'd be massively confident. Who do you but think wins the league? We're talking about Liverpool. Who do you think wins the league? Who's currently top? Arsenal. They're, they're currently favourites to win it. So they're, Arsenal, they're a top on goal Arsenal being by top by a point at goal the stage on goal, is huge. No, Arsenal being top on goal difference yeah. 10 games before the end of the season with the hardest fixtures to come still having to go 
to Old Trafford, Tottenham, and the Etihad because they're top in March. You just go, they're going to win the league. Yeah, but based on, on momentum, there's got to be a little bit more here. Who's that? Why are the two teams? How's it a bit, how's it a bit more? They're the highest scorers in Europe. They got the best defense in Europe. They just got through the knockout stage of the Champions League for the first time <laughs> in over a decade. Okay, they're the best okay, side no, that's fine. That's fine. No, but say that then. Say that rather than who's well, top today. I did just say that. Who's top today? Who's top today? Instead of you cutting me off. Instead of you cutting me off. Who's top today? Who's bottom today? Okay, well, the league's Well, done we're then. doing a tottle race on the screen. Uh, right, I think we're only Arsenal <laughs> top. I think they're favourites. Do, they do you think Arsenal are favourites to beat Man City at the Etihad? They can get a draw and then okay, Liverpool so, but, can take it, an advantage. But do you think they've more. Who has more of a chance of winning the game, Man City or Arsenal at the Etihad? City are slight favourites in that okay, game. Okay, so if you're slight favourites in that game, then you're also slight favourites to be two points clear of Arsenal <laughs> yeah. by March 31st. I, I just don't see it. And if that is the case, then you'd be favourites. I've not seen it from the City side. So you don't think they'll win against Arsenal? Let's say City are out of the title race, as Booby says. Who who are you taking? So Arsenal are out of the scared. I think it is. He's doubling down. I thought he was on a wind-up. It always comes back to the last two seasons for me with Arsenal where they were strong favourites for top four. (sighs) They were strong favourites. No, I agree that they're a better side and they're a more mature side because it is a quite young side. Mm. But over the last two years... At the most crucial point of the season, they, they have I mean, completely collapsed. Don't you don't have to tell me about that. I mean, I've, I know that. Right? You don't think it's coming this year? My, my worry, I can understand where the pessimism from Boovey is coming from. Not, but it, but it isn't City really. It's about what Arsenal have become potentially, and that's what that's Perfect. what I'm worried about. The acquisitions of Rice, especially, has made them into a different outfit altogether, and I can't see the collapse that we've seen previously. I hope. And they did have a mini one in sort of December. Mm. But they, 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 they lost they, to West Ham and Fulham in a row, didn't they? Yeah, and they, they had a little iffy period. But if that is the that is it for the rest of the season, then Arsenal are in a good position. But the reason, but the reason why it can't be, they've won eight in a row at the time of filming. Yeah, they have ten left to play. They can't. What we're suggesting here is that they're going to do something like what? Sixteen wins, sixteen wins out of eighteen. Games? Pretty much unprecedented, right? Pretty much unprecedented. Was it, wasn't it Arteta that said he thinks they can drop four? He points? said they can drop four points, which so means that's they two draws, two draws out of the rest. Shows you how hard it is. Bearing in mind eight. that they've already won eight, so, so that's eight, saying they need ten 90 left. Points. He's of, saying they have to go and beat him now as well. That, so that means eight. <sighs> What's a, it going to be? Sixteen wins out of eighteen games. Yeah, I don't, that's half the season that they're going to draw to. I think you, you look at their next fixtures. If they beat City, the momentum they'd have going into Luton at home, Brighton away, and Villa at home would yeah. be insane. Oh, if, I think if, if, if they, they beat City, absolutely. So, yeah. are we ultimately saying that a lot of this comes down to that? City it's a huge game. It's the biggest game. Obviously, it's, it's a massive, massive game. Do you, you, you think that is? Is it too soon to call that a title decider? Obviously, well, we've seen because because Liverpool have Brighton though they could still be top of the league after that game. Which leaves them in an interesting position. Mm-hmm. Don't forget, Adam Liverpool have got to go to Old Trafford as well. <laughs> so <laughs> Liverpool, I bet, I Liverpool's, the, Liverpool's next four games: that. Brighton at home, Sheffield, Man United, and Palace. I know that you're United fans, but it's twelve come points, on. isn't it? Mm-hmm. Come on, that is a four fixtures. Depending on where the European fixtures fall, that you would really fancy them to win. And then they're six games away. There's all this momentum with Klopp. You know, I, they're very tough games at the end of the season. I mean, I, it, I know we're bad, but I can't sit here. And I can't. Sit I can't. I, yeah, I can't, it's, it's, it wound it, me right. It's, up. it's horrible. <laughs> it's really horrible. I think obviously it's more impactful that Liverpool have the fixture at United. The same way that it might be more impactful that you look at Spurs having to play all three teams. Obviously, that game with Arsenal is more charged than it is for them with the other two sides. Mm. Spurs are so, at home in that one. As you well, know, well, maybe that plays yeah. into it as well when it's a derby game. Uh, maybe Arsenal feel some uh, added pressure there. Obviously, it's, it's a bigger fixture for them than it is for City and Liverpool. So. Spurs have got a huge role in this title race. Flav, what do you think in terms of the three games back to back? In terms of prediction for those results, have you City, got them Arsenal. Yeah, yeah you know, <laughs> right, 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 right. rest of the fixtures are good. But, That's sorry. what we come and catch you, boys. <laughs> what, what is it in your opinion? Is it, is it, is nine, it nine points, Flav? Nine points. <laughs> Look, I, it's I, I, I think I, I think we beat Arsenal and City at home, and I, I don't think I'll ever see Spurs win at Anfield for the rest of my life <laughs> so <clears throat> I, can, I think that we, we will have a massive impact the big fear from a Spurs fan is we beat City and beat Liverpool as we did or, or we beat City last season and lost to Arsenal if you remember we thought that like, we pretty much handed Arsenal the title race we have a massive say in it but I think I'm going to put my uh, I, I think we, we we I'm worried I'm worried about Arsenal and, and, I'm, wor- and I'm worried about that Liverpool game but fundamentally, if we do what we need to do and we started to play in a way that we, we did at the start of the season, all our players are back. Why can't Spurs go on a, a little run towards the end of the season? Well, you're saying you could involve yourself in the conversation. Well, well, at the start of the season, we won eight in ten, drew two. If we do that again... How many points do you have right Wait, now? for what are we talking about? The title race? 
I'm saying that we might. If they beat Ireland. all those three teams, it, could they pull If everyone into loses it? all the games, if we, I suppose we're not a game. Yeah. Thought, <laughs> no, 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 it's not that. Is <laughs> it? We're, clo we're, we're closer than you think, though. We're closer than you think. You can't, hang on, you can't claim we're doing a serious video. You started it off with Man City right at the title race. You can't. As we said, that ship has sailed. That ship has sailed. We've got Spurs fans saying they're going to win the title. That's a lot. I don't think you were trying to say that. I think you were trying to say that. Because between us and winning the league title, I think he's trying to say they could finish second, maybe. I think that we could infiltrate that top three Oh, place. no way. Over there who? Is. Right. Well, well, City are probably City since they're out of it. If we get two big results out of that three, I, I think... I think You'll Spurs beat us as well. See how confident you You'll beat Spurs us. Have. Mm. Uh, Spurs and, have 53 points. And the difference uh, between... With a game in hand. The, the, the period... And the, the game in hand is Chelsea away, so that's not going to be easy and probably, you know, one that... Well, if you win that, you're seven up. points behind City. Maybe that, that, City are out of title race. The fixture list... Not much to play for. They've given up. The Tottenham fixture list is is very significant. I don't think it's significant for where they finish, but it's very significant for how the table ends up. Because if you look at Arsenal's fixtures, they basically play, they play three sides away from home. Two of those sides, well, they, they play, yeah, they play two of those sides, Chelsea and Tottenham, are just both going to be desperate to stop them winning the league. Like yeah. Chelsea's, Chelsea's whole season now They've revolves around Trafford stopping well. Arsenal winning the league. The only game that matters to me now, between now and the rest of the season, is preserving Arsenal's 20-year wait for a title. Tottenham, yeah. Tottenham will feel exactly the same. Would you sacrifice top four finish to make sure Arsenal don't win the league? Yes, yeah, uh, without, without, without question, 100%. Uh, don't worry. I think both of those things will come true, Flav. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they're not, they're all in. They're not 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 in. So, uh, I can't lie. If City don't win it, I do think City are going to win it, personally. I'm not like... It's hard to look past them. I do think Liverpool will win it, though, if City don't win it. Because I just... Yeah, so just Arsenal with the club no, thing, no the momentum. Now, I'm not saying Arsenal don't have a chance. I, I do think Arsenal have a chance. I just think the club Liverpool is something. Do we not look at chance. football history yeah, yeah. that a side that are currently top this late into the season? How many times have we said Bro, at Christmas they're, they're, they're joint their favourites? Well, they're joint top one point well, clear of the champions. It matter. You were joint top when the when Aguero no, no, scored. Joint, Goal difference matters. Top one point clear of the champions. It's not like they're five points clear. Mm. Yeah, but history matters in football. There's a reason no one's ever won four in a row. There's a weight. There's a weight. History also you have to apply context to it. Yeah, well, context, yeah, context is, is there actually, one point. Context, context is, is Arsenal you're... currently top with no other games in hand. You know, Arsenal, you know if Arsenal had beaten West Ham 1-0 and Sheffield United 1-0 and were therefore second on goal difference, would you go, well, they're not going to win the league? <laughs> well, I'm not. Well, it's, it's a non. It's a non question. It's got no substance. It's, 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 it's got no substance. It, who's currently it's, top? It's a, it's a Arsenal. It's a complete question. It's not a non question. It's it, it's, I think it's, it's a non question. It's quite a Arsenal, Arsenal, Arsenal score six against West Ham. Yeah. So plus six. They then score six against Sheffield United. Plus six. Plus twelve. They're therefore top of the top of the league. If they had won both of those games one nil. Yeah. Would you? And their goal difference and, is worse. And they were therefore second. They'd, in the they'd be in worse form. That wouldn't be as. Caught, and, wouldn't be as but because for because, they, because they didn't score but as many goals. But things did happen. United, I, 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 they they honestly, honestly, I honestly believe that if they had won both of those games one 0 it would have felt a lot more shaky. And Bowie's opinion might be different. I know you're doing a hypothetical. But they're smashing sides. The reason sides. why they're so confident is they are smashing teams for five 0 They've broke a record for the most games. I think with three goals and mm. away from home, or maybe it was five away from home. Those like results do matter. Like if you're scrapping one nils at this stage of the season, it's a lot different to going and spanking the team six nil. Obviously, I know what you're trying to get at with the goal difference. If it's slightly different, would they not be favourites? But the form Arsenal are in, like I at the start of the season thought Arsenal had no chance to win the title. I thought if they even got into this position, they'd have no chance. But like Flav said, they do look like a different unit. They look a lot more experienced, and the way they bottled it last year, obviously a lot to do with Saliba getting injured. It doesn't seem like it's coming, but clear favourites, it's hard to say. This game's huge, isn't it? It's whatever, whatever happens in this game, <laughs> the momentum <laughs> shifts significantly. Mm. And uh, can Arsenal go to City and, 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 and win? Of course they can, but the likelihood of that result is that City will win. And then the, the, the conversation completely around the end of the season goes shifts in, in City's favour. Liverpool just sort of just bubbling around under, under the radar to some degree. I think most people think they're not strong enough given the injuries that, that mm. they won't have... Uh, well, they essentially won't end up champions at the end of the year. But you're, you've been quite dismissive of Arsenal. I don't know if that's the right word. No, I haven't. So uh, do you think that they... No, they, I, I haven't. I just feel like them. someone needs to make the case for Man City. And if the Man City fan isn't going to do it, I feel like I have to. Yeah, I think Man City also, just, win just to add, Arsenal have away trips to City, obviously. Brighton, Wolves, Spurs and Manchester United to come. I think um, Arsenal have the hardest running. Look at these fixtures. I think Arsenal have the hardest running. Um, and got Champions League as well. Liverpool have away trips to Manchester United, Fulham, West Ham, Villa. If, if you think of reasons, like why why won't Arsenal win the league? 
it's very like what would I, I'd say the fixtures would be like the reason. Yeah. If you say why won't Liverpool win the league, I'd say injuries. Mm. Alexander Arnold, Diogo Jota, they're huge, right? Yeah, Alisson. Like if you say why won't City win the league, I can't really think of a reason why they won't win it. You could talk about the brilliance of the other two. Well, they've probably got the easiest running. Thing, I think the other exactly. two have they've to They've probably be got perfect. the easiest running yeah, as well. They've got, they have got the easiest running. You've got the, they've got the easiest fixtures. They've probably got, obviously they've got the experience and they don't have the injuries that Liverpool have with, with key And players. they know how to manage European football. You know, with Arsenal, the, the arduous nature of playing a domestic campaign combined with a European campaign, it's, it's brilliant, but it's very difficult. Manchester City know exactly how to juggle that. This is new for us. But why, can, why can't we beat Arsenal and still be behind Liverpool? Why, why do you want to Liverpool... be underdog so much, man? Well, no, I'm just saying, Liverpool currently one point above us. If they keep winning as well, they can pull a, a winning streak out of, out, out of nowhere. They've got you and Klopp. I, I, well, I, do th- I, I would personally think that it's between beat... City and Liverpool. Yeah. I, I do think Arsenal's did the you... tough nature of their fixtures and the, the little did bit of an experience. We haven't seen Liverpool only got a thir- like, percentage, uh, percentage-wise, 13% chance of winning the league despite being top that's insane it, it doesn't make much sense to me but apparently based on their performance against they the, have to be the, close to perfect like Arteta said they can afford to drop four they have to be close to perfect and we look but they all have to be close teams. to perfect yeah, at this they point, see, at this point the closest yeah. to perfection really. why, why can't Liverpool go on a run then because they've actually done they it in the can, past but when you look at Liverpool they're, they're, they're injured why are you getting so, so like, angry that we think there's still two clubs as well right I'm just asking a question Europa League this is so weird that Everybody Liverpool who doesn't support Man City to has goals. to make a case for Man City at the table. It's just gone in a really odd direction. It's Liverpool, odd. it's not odd. I'm just fine saying we're currently third. <laughs> and I don't think we're massive. Com- we're, we're not huge favourites above two other sides to win the, the league right. title. Can, can we move the debate a little bit further and talk about maybe some individuals that could decide this title? Um, Boovy, if you are truthful in you saying that you think City are the third favourites, which I don't think you are, but anyway. <laughs> so we're more than... No, 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 no let's stop, let's stop. Let's All right. Which on. City players have to turn up to make you favourites then? If you're not... No, and we're not... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Which one of those spirited underdogs <laughs> <laughs> must finally start yeah. delivering for Manchester yeah. City? Yeah, we're, we're lucky with our squad, of course. We've got the best squad out of the other two at the moment. And, and someone like Erling Haaland, De Bruyne have to, have to connect. De Bruyne's got a big few months to play. It might be his final season at the club. And he'll be so frustrated at what ha- happened at Anfield, getting substituted early. The game went past him a little bit. I think Endo got to grips with him really, really well. But I think he got substituted at Anfield because Guardiola sees the running and wants to get Could 80... that be a little bit because of his return from injury as well? He's yeah, not fully fit yet. He, he was completely out of it. And in the final 10 minutes before he got substituted, I thought he was completely five yards off the pace, in my opinion. So uh, he got rested for that. If De Bruyne clicks, and obviously we're, the squad we've got is the best out of the three. What about Phil Foden? Could he carry it to the title? Yeah, uh, he's been the best player for, uh, for City this season. His goals are huge as well. Because there are points look, against Liverpool, Holland didn't quite click, did he? Um, and if that happens again in, in the rest of the season, Phil Foden's going to have to step up. Have you been just, just, to re- just to reframe it, because obviously you're concerned that you're not you're not going to win the league. Um, and these these players have carried you to league titles before. Uh, I would assume that a lot of these guys are going to deliver because they've delivered in the past. Um, what areas then are causing? Your concern, if you're like highlighting a player, and you're missing or an area of the pitch, like, where you really think? missing them. Gundogan, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Gundogan, yeah, Gundogan, yeah. yeah. Gundogan, he's a massive yeah, loss. goals from midfield, so huge. With goals from midfield, and how many times have we seen difference? it with, with title winning sides, the Lampards of the world stepping up and, and Skull scoring big goals from midfield? We don't have that. We got we got Kovacic who hits it sideways, and Nunes hasn't, Rodri loves hasn't a big goal, he? Rodri, yeah, but you can't expect him to be scoring all the winners that he has. Uh, for me, honestly, it's just an energy thing in terms of competing against two others. If it's just us versus Arsenal, obviously, I'll be massively confident because you're over 50% favourites to win the league but against two other sides the, se- the second half against Manchester United was Im- immensely impressive from Manchester City that was not mm. you're talking about 45 minutes in the first half sorry the second half against Liverpool and it seems is it not changed your opinion just that 45 minutes because you must after after the Man United game I thought City have got this I don't see I, I've not read into the Man United game in many years it hasn't it hasn't really decided things hugely but with all due respect it hasn't been a well, I mean, it has balance of that game though no, but it's not been because you're 1-0 you, down and if you lose to United it. beat United it, it doesn't really affect us you've lost against Man United season. a lot at the attempt yeah, but it hasn't meant dark. anything in the title race beating Liverpool has beating Liverpool at Anfield league, was a huge game for us 4-1 2021 we went on to win the league title that was huge beating Arsenal last season we went on to win the league title the Man United games haven't led to any serious silverware in nearly 10 years now so no no but it's still the point he's making is you were behind in a derby mm. and, and we were with the pressure yeah. run that you have. Yeah, and you played fantastic Even with well. competing against two other teams in the title race. I don't know why I'm defending City. Um, <laughs> which players from Liverpool um, do you think are important for them in terms of title? Uh, 
you know, getting them the title. Because they've got so yeah. many injuries. Van Dijk, if he doesn't get injured, is super important. Like, mm. if he went, they would automatically crumble. He's held the team together a lot. I think Nunes, I said it the last time I was on here, I think he's amazing. I know mm. not everyone agrees, but I was talking... I'm coming round to it. I've been talking about him winning the Ballon d'Or since the start of the season. Not for this year, just before that gets... <laughs> yeah, Vincent's yeah. been on the Darwin Nunes train for quite a long time. He's, and he's, good. I, he's good. My frustration with him is because largely because I have him in my fantasy Premier League team <laughs> and I get very sour and bitter. Um, he does miss a lot of chances, but oftentimes they're chances that no one else would have anyway in a position because he's either created them or he's, you know, manufactured that opportunity for himself. So I do think Darwin Nunez is Salah's a big player. Still is important. He, oh, he's their most important, but I think that's actually... They've done well to get by without him at times as well, yeah. I think. That's the thing. That's the strength of them now or, or more so is that it's not just Salah or bust, right? Mm. They, they have a very good attacking lineup, obviously, and they have in previous years with um, Mane and whatnot. But I, I think Nunez is going to play a big role in sort of replacing that threat and is beginning to look like a guy who's going to do it's that weird, for a very long time for Liverpool. You remember this. Remember when Fergie said he was going to retire? And like, we still won the league, but it just went flat. Mm. Yeah. And it yeah. just felt weird. Like, they've just managed to, I don't know, mm. well, no, flip it. That was always like going to happen. Got sad about they've, the they've been galvanised by it. <laughs> yeah, to, yeah, to yeah they have. an unbelievable degree, <laughs> which is obviously not unexpected given the way, you know, people uh, rally around Klopp at Liverpool. Yeah. He's sort of a messianic figure, isn't he? So, yeah. I mean, I don't think that's a surprise. That's that's the one thing that Liverpool have that both Arsenal and City, City don't have. And that is the fact that this is essentially Klopp's swan song. This is the end of his time at the club. And if, if there's one t- group of players and a fan base um, that need nothing else than motivation. It seems to be Liverpool. They pull results out of the hat, mm. out of the bag when they when they um, when they need them. And it's just that that's they, they've got that twelfth man that the, based on Klopp's decision to leave at this stage and and timing that announcement in in in, in it, when when they did it meant that Liverpool are a different a different beast and they don't have the first eleven of the other two. I don't think I don't think there's good in, in terms of first eleven of City and Arsenal. But they do have that, and that's massive for them because all these players are incredible, right? They can all fit into each other's teams pretty much as and when you'd need them. Uh, but but what what Liverpool have is that moment of motivation and that additional two or three percent that that, that Arsenal Klopp's seed. The equalizer in- he massively oh, yeah. just the he really equalizer. Is. He really is. the team that Klopp had out against City in the second half. I know you were talking about that quite a lot with Bradley and Keller. I know they're not like super young players and I know the narrative of the young players got overplayed a little bit, but they had a lot of players in that pitch that I don't think if their managers were reversed, like Guardiola could have done. No, it's also not just no the way. age, it's the, no, no, uh, no the experience way. levels of the players. Yeah, of course. Like right. you can bring young players who you know, are really experienced, yeah. but they're bringing in some players that are just fresh from the academy. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Liverpool fans would be loving that. Yeah. I hope they don't do this, man. What about oh, for yeah. Arsenal? Who do you reckon just, is most Yeah, to move to, to move to Arsenal, I think, and quite shockingly, um, I think Kai Havertz. Oh, yeah, I think Kai Havertz, honestly. He's, he's I mean, the course. second half of this season. I mean, <laughs> why did you look at Rory when you said that? <laughs> I just look. At, I just, I just like looking at Rory. He's a nice guy to look at. Uh, there's a lot to like about Rory. But I think you know, the start of the season, we looked at Kai Havertz potentially as being sort of. Uh, I saw him discussed a lot in like flop of the season. You know, like worst transfer dealing of the season. And I think in the last, I don't know, 10, 15 games for Arsenal, his. Contributions. Contributions insane. just uh, unbelievable. And mm. uh, I can't remember who, who it was talking the other day about, it was a question about who's the footballer with the highest footballing IQ in the Premier League. Oh, um, I don't know if I can give you Havertz for this. And they, and they were talking about Kai Havertz. Um, and I, I think he's been unbelievable for them, which is quite a surprise because obviously you talk about Flav, you spoke about Declan Rice. Mm. Obviously that's a big change from last season. Um, and then, you know, Saka, Odegaard, whoever, whoever else. But I think Kai Havertz, honestly. How right has he's so right, 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 is, is decided to play Havertz over Jesus? Or, how right do you think uh, Arteta's got a right with the goalkeeper <laughs> situation? Because at the start of the season, that was quite controversial as well. And I think, I Ray, think, Ray, I think Ray has been spectacular. Do, do you? Yeah. That's I think he's cool coming to his own recently. But without, would you, do you think you'd still feel that way without the penalty? Oh, 100%. Heroics. I just think the calmness of him and Sleeve at the back is just like so different to when Ramsdale was there. Ramsdale is very like Pickford and he gets riled up and like it can be good to watch. He's very but I think you need a calm head. Even did you see when Odegaard scored the first penalty last night and he was going crazy? Ray <laughs> just stayed completely calm. And I think in those big moments, you want a calm head rather than like a passion monster. Like I think you want the player. And I think Ray. Like, I, don't, I felt harsh for Ramsdale at the start of the season, but like I think it's been a big, big move. And Do it's you know paid what? off. I, I, I really like that shape because. I think a big sign of like an elite manager or an elite mentality is everyone would look at that Arsenal squad 
and probably not identify Ramsdale last season as a point of mm. I think he got room for fake goalkeeper yeah. last year. No, he did really well. Because you'd look at that Arsenal and say, Ramsdale's fine. He's he's doing you know he's doing a solid job. But to to take it to the next level, if you want to win league titles, you have to have the acumen to look at a role like that and think it's not quite mm. where you want. And you it take to be. the goalkeeper from and Brentford. And be brave you know? enough to but take. You talk, you talk the keeper from Brentford as well. It's not like small Real Madrid's yeah. goalkeeper or whatever. The, the, the only reason it's a tiny margin. The only reason why I think it's. Look, from our perspective, watching Ramsdale put in the performances, the performances that he did over consecutive years, it looked like a huge statement from Arteta to try and improve him. Like he looked like he was good, you know, improving a position of strength that wasn't necessarily necessary. But we don't get to meet him. And I think when you get a bit of an insight into his character, which we've Arteta would get, with, 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 yeah, with I don't right think it was a genius stroke. I don't think it was a genius stroke that it looks like when you just, an we're just analysing his performances. Right. Mikel Arteta's met the geezer and he goes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mikel yeah, Arteta's met him and goes, yeah, I need a new goalie, man. Well, he said it, that to Mikel Arteta at the, in the dining room <laughs> about yeah. concentrating. And Mikel yeah. Arteta's well, like, what, what, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know that now. Yeah. <laughs> it was interesting because Tottenham, Tottenham was really sort of linked with with, with Rare and it looked like he might come to Spurs and if you believe what's being said that there was a conversation between Postacoglu and David Rea that uh, that Postacoglu got the uh, the impression that he was more interested in leaving Brentford than he was the destination wherever right. he could go he just wanted out and for that reason we went to, and, and, and signed Vicario who said that he would have walked here and signed in blood but <laughs> But did he, did he say that? that? It's he a bit say, intense, isn't it? Yeah. 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 I mean, we, we, we he was it. on the goal at the time. Yeah. He's a bit spurious. <laughs> Where is he living? Whose blood? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look, I, I'm, I'm t t telling you what he said. I think uh, he thought he was either San Antonio Spurs. <laughs> but but the, the point I'm trying to make here is that you, you once again, you can't fault Arteta's decision making and it's been pretty much Every time impeccable. you doubt Arteta, he seems to put, like, I thought, Kai Havertz was a huge Yeah, error. so we all did. And that you know, seems to be going well. Do you know who's been pretty well. good that'll kill you as well? Jorginho has been good since he stepped in last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, he's he really been, been impressive. Yeah. Jorgi Jorginho's, Jorginho's been fine for yeah, them. He's been good. What I would, what, with Jorginho there, there was less of a conversation. I never liked him. I didn't want him anywhere I near know, Chelsea's yeah. midfield. But there was less of a conversation around how good is he. People that liked him, liked him and rated him. Whereas awesome. Kai Havertz, there was a genuine conversation but going, this bloke isn't good enough. Kai Havertz is... And you could probably use this with the Chelsea that you're seeing right now with some of the players. And it's why sometimes when we talk about Chelsea players, I get worried about going too hard on them because like with Kai Havertz, it's probably the environment. The mm. environment's so toxic. Everything is... Are we not going a little bit far about how good he is and how... Like, no, no, I'm look, just talking about the difference between four Arsenal and Chelsea. Games. And like, he scored in four consecutive games. He cost 70 million quid. He scored eight goals all season. Tactic, he was anonymous it? against Porto. He made a like, big difference in the big games this season, though. No, like, he's, 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 had, he's had price moment. tags irrelevant, surely, because I mean, there's not a player who's going to win your Premier League title race who's worth less than seventy million quid. Mm. No, it's not like he's an well, outlier. The in reason that why regard. it's not the reason why it's not irrelevant is because my and I still believe this: if you're going to spend seventy million quid on a player, you get a better player than Kai Havertz. Yeah, I don't think you can say it's irrelevant. No, but if they win a league title or if they win a Champions League and he's, he's proven the, the difference. The, the jury's still, still out, really, isn't he? Mm. Um, the still, I think well, as a centre forward, he's been really, really good. When he's been played goals. in midfield, he has He's been responsible been. for yeah, more yeah. points than I thought he would be. So but on that logic, he's already sort of proved me wrong. I would have said, if somebody had said at the beginning of the season, will he be responsible for He's not this the most important player in the run-in. Like, if Havertz gets injured, it's mm. a lot better than if Rice or Sleeper get injured. That's fair. That's, right? yeah. that's a very fair point. Yeah, right? yeah. That's yeah, a very fair point. Oh, yeah, because there are players in that Arsenal side that are irreplaceable. I mean, Saka gets injured, it's big trouble. Mate, Raya. Ah, uh, Raya, there is Ramsdale. Like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, Brentford. <laughs> I think, you know, I think they, um, they, they might be able to cope with the loss of one. Of I think Saka, I think, Saliba, I, uh, I think Rice, Saka's the most Rice. important player. Odegaard, not, not, Saka, not Rice. Saka's not the most important Rice is Declan Rice by country. Declan Rice, I think Rice. Rice. I, think, I, can't, I can't live with that. that I, could get I think he's important. I don't think he's the most I think Saka gets very underrated. You could play Trossard there easy. Would Arsenal still score goals even without Saka in that team? Whereas Rice seems more... Declan Rice is irreplaceable to that. Like, completely irreplaceable. He's worth his weight in gold to that. Especially with Tom Thomas Party's issues and in and out of the squad and all that kind of thing. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Rice yeah, probably is the most. Odegaard. Like nobody Street else. Nobody else in that squad. If you can could do what pick, can do. I'm not going to say injury because you don't want to wish injury. Let's say suspension. I wish injury. <laughs> you could wish a suspension on an Arsenal and a Liverpool Ten game player. suspension. Because they have a scrap. Who would you? Who it'd would you be want? Declan Rice. And the, the, the difference. Liverpool is, one. The difference uh, for Liverpool, it'd be it'd probably be Van Dijk for leadership and experience yeah. in the title. Um, and, can I just pick you up on something? It's all right. It's all right. I just wish injury on someone. Yeah, you, no, no, no. <laughs> I, I, think, I think it's all right to write with some injuries. So a little. Okay. Have any all season, a couple of hamstrings is fine. Okay. To little, little, <laughs> hammy. I'm not saying like stop toe. Cruciate. You can't wish for a cruciate. But you can yeah, wish yeah, yeah. for a hamstring. All right, sweet, just, sweet, yeah, sweet. Just, Who do you want to get hammy done? Do you think it's quite interesting? Rice to have a hammy. 100. percent 
Do you think it's quite interesting that I think we we sort of broad agreement that the two players that you would take out of Arsenal uh, and Liverpool are Van Dijk and Rice, who quite clearly are not the most prolific or mm. skillful or technically gifted players. But at this stage of the season, they are the two players who quite clearly mm. are the most leadership, the yeah. backbone, the grit, the, the it's the glue. It's, it's the glue that holds everything together. Yeah, it's the anchor, it's, isn't it? It's the anchor of both teams. Without Declan Rice, Arsenal aren't the same side. Without yeah. Virgil van Dijk, Liverpool aren't the same side. Mm. At Manchester City, I feel like because of, maybe because of the strength I mean, of it's depth. Rodri. It's Rodri. It's 100% Rodri. It's Rodri. 100%. Because there's no one else like but, but without it's, reducing, it's not even close. Without reducing it to it's, sort of a, a passion merchant debate, it is very important this stage of the season to have someone who's going to go out there and make sure that everyone is... But I think it's also what where they, they need to be mm, doing, what, what they need what to be Declan done. What Declan Rice right? does on Absolutely. the pitch and what Van Dijk does on the pitch, it's so important to the way they play. Yeah. And if you take that out, then like Van Dyke allows him to play so hard. It's high. like having Roy Keane at United. Yeah, you know, 100%. Oh, yeah, similar, time definitely. Like, definitely. Rice has got Roy Keane about him. A million percent. He's a Roy Keane figure, Declan Rice. So, so who is actually going to win the league? Yeah, should, we all, should we all just say... Let's go to Bruvi Who do we believe? Let's, let's walk our way down and tomorrow. then we'll just go through favourites to win the league. Is, isn't it... Isn't it do, oh, sorry, Spray? Just go, go favourites to win the league. From, okay. Um, it's an amazing situation that we're in. <laughs> but I have absolutely no idea, really. I'm going to go... It's painful, but I think I'm going to go. I'm going to go Man City. Actually. I'm going to go Man City. Say what you were going to say, man. I was going to say Arsenal. But Why I didn't can't you? Quite bring my only out of tribalism and rivalry. Okay, I don't want so it to happen. I don't want it to happen, so I'm not saying it. I, Man City. I, I agree with Rory for the same reasons, but also uh, th I've watched City do this over and over again, and th there is absolutely it's not a crazy thing to even think about City winning every single game this season because they've done it. They did it against Liverpool in much more stressful situations and pressurized situations than the ones they find themselves in right now. Pep Guardiola is the best manager in the world, probably the best manager the Premier League's ever seen, part bar. Ferguson. Shut your mouth. Well, I, I, said, oh, I was waiting for it. I was waiting for it. I was waiting for it. Hurry up, man. Say what you're Sorry, waffling, bro. Sorry, I won't come this time. The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, sit, uh, it's going to be sissy because they, they know how to do it. It kills me to say it, but I think with the next four fixtures, if Liverpool get the game done and the atmosphere at Anfield and just in the city of Liverpool, like Klopp's going to do it and he's going to get the fairy tale ending. And it's it's going to be painful for everyone if he does it. Oh, oh, God. We'll look after it. I think that United, I think United <laughs> might lose by more than five goals against us. Now, you know what I've said? We beat him in the cup and we... Uh, you lose both. League. You'll lose both you lose both. You won't touch the ball. You lose both. I love that. This <laughs> is released. Liverpool treble. I love that. This <laughs> is released while Manchester United are still in the hat of the FA Cup. Liverpool anyway, treble. Um, <laughs> I think I, I've been saying it all. Like Manchester City win the league. I, I, I just think it's an inevitability about it, and I think Liverpool's injuries—they've uh, got a lot of them—and um, I think Arsenal will eventually they got the hardest running. Um, but it's been an incredible race, if you if you like that sort of thing. <laughs> if yeah, if, you, if you're into your title races, which if, Adam if and you're I into currently three are, teams that you hate trying to get the Premier League, not too interested. Um, yeah, I think Arsenal probably got the toughest running. Liverpool slightly tougher run in the city. I can't see. Arsenal going to the Etihad and getting anything. I, th I think just City win that game. And as Slav said, I think they could just go on and win every game less than left in the season. So yeah, City for me. City, City, anyway, uh, Liverpool, Manchester City, City fan City. movie. What do you think? Arsenal. Oh, Jesus. No. He's we, gone it doesn't need to be. Are you trying to jinx them? I'm not trying to jinx anything. Are you trying to put pressure? Do you if think, just, look, because uh, Ramsdale thing. watches us. We won't and go you know over it again. All I'm saying is, yeah, last season it was just us and Arsenal. Room. Last season it was us and Arsenal. Every game I was watching the Arsenal game, thinking they're going to drop points here, and the pressure was on. But when there's two sides, by definition, you, 40 chesses. Do this. you know what it reminds me? So of? You know, you know when someone gets chance. nominated for an award and they're like, "No, there's no way I'm going to win that." There's no way I'm going to win that. It wouldn't be me. Meanwhile, they're telling everyone to vote. I don't see it. Oh, he knows they're going to win. You're not allowed to celebrate. He just wants to win. Tight, you're not allowed to celebrate. He just wants to pretend that there's some tight. sort of dark horse. It could go to the final day of the season. That's how tight it is. Imagine if it goes to the final day. All three teams, though. Me, Man City. All three sides on the team. You wouldn't believe it, would you? You wouldn't believe it. Boovie. I, I don't know which Boovie's turned up to. I'm really confused. What happened to him? <laughs> what have you done to him? <laughs> I haven't done anything. He's been at Cheltenham this week. He's been kicked in the air, Bill. <laughs> 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 Sounds about right. Um, so that's who we think will win the league. And that's our debate on the title race. It is heating up massively at the moment. Let us know who you think will win the league, who will win that big game between Manchester City and Arsenal. Um, you know, is Boovie right or is he just a shook one? 
I think he's a shook one. Thank you very much to Spraggy for joining us, Finton as well. And of course, the fighting cock himself, Flav. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. Make sure you subscribe into the club. Check all these lads on their socials as well. We'll link them in the description below. And we'll see you soon. <laughs>